So again, welcome everybody to the second lecture. This one is called Play Like a Pro. Well, what can I say, but we've just had the Candidates Tournament in Berlin. It was an eight-player double round robin tournament featuring some of the world's very, very strongest players with the exception of the world champion Magnus Carlsen. The entire uh, idea of the event is to produce a challenger to Magnus Carlsen. So the winner of this eight-player double round robin will win the tournament and the right to challenge Magnus. And it's the worst tournament in the world to play because essentially is only one prize, the first. You want to be challenger to the world champion, and it's an exceptionally hard tournament to win. Of the eight players, I think everybody went into this tournament with a 15% chance, which means 120%. <laughs> if Magnus Carlsen entered this field, there's no guarantee whatsoever that he would win. In fact, I think his chances of winning the tournament are probably 20% to 25% at the start, meaning you have to play this tournament four times or even five times for Magnus to be the clear winner. So everybody's in there with a shout. And I had four favorites for this tournament. Of course, the two Americans, Wesley So and Fabiano. Come on, guys, you can do it. Uh, being elderly myself, Vladimir Kramnik, how sweet. The 14th world champion versus the current world champion. That would be a great matchup, the old lion and the young lion. And finally, my fourth pick out of the eight players was Levon. Levon um, was essentially the player of the year in 2017. At one time, he was the number two player in the world by far. There was Magnus. Levon, and then the rest of the world. And I thought of him as a clear favorite going into the tournament. Maybe I had him at 16% uh, chances of winning. He finished last. <laughs> 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 oh, painful, painful, painful event. There was some incredible drama to the event. In the 12th round, the two leaders of the tournament, Fabiano and Shaq Idar Mamedarov, Shaq, uh, were the two leaders and they both lost in round 12. It made the field wide open and there was many, as many as five players in the last two rounds that could have potentially won the tournament. Uh, and they were Fabiano still, Shaq, uh, Sergey. Kiryagin, um, Ding Lerin, and Alexander Grushuk. Everybody had a th thrilling final two games, and Fabiano pulled it out, and he won his last two games to win and become challenger. So we're all extremely proud of his success. But I was also looking at the games of Levon Aronian, and even when the games were not decisive in this candidate's tournament, they were wild affairs. The draws were incredibly exciting. This is such a game. Levon Aronian versus Alexander Grishuk. At the time that this game was played, we didn't know the fates of the players. We didn't know that Levon was going to tumble, tumble, tumble down to the final position, and Grishuk didn't know that he would potentially be vying for first. Okay, so here we go. And uh, Alexander Grishuk is a very awkward player uh, to prepare for as white because on the one hand he can play Grunfeld, the other hand he can play King's Indian, he can play many forms of uh, the Benonis, and you just don't know what kind of mood he's in for. So with the move f2, f3, uh, Levon is trying to be cagey and avoid uh, the potential for a um, Grunfeld defense. And he's trying to steer the game. Oops. Now what did I do? I did something wrong. 
uh, he's trying to steer the game into a King's Indian with f3. So he's hoping, sorry for that uh, going up and down, he's hoping to avoid a Grunfeld and he wants to play a King's Indian. Well, the next thing you know, oops, excuse me, the players are in a Benoni. It's kind of a Benoni King's Indian. Okay, all of these moves are very, very well known. Uh, theoretical, you can go into a database and you can find a thousand games or more uh, amongst grandmasters from the starting position. Many, many more moves to be played. But there are many approaches that White can take in this position. Uh, and Levon decided that he wanted to put his king's knight, this knight on over here, uh, oops, excuse me. Now I'm, I'm so used to chess base. Do you want this in chess base? Uh, yeah, I think I could. You mean just go to P? <laughs> there we go. Okay. Yeah, this was much better. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so this is the position. Oops, not quite yet there. So White just puts his knight on g3, and his intention is to advance these pawns as he completes his development. h5. Okay, this is a very, uh, this is the latest and greatest in uh, Benoni theory. Uh, the idea with this move is Black wants to push away this knight from g3 and to gain some space on the king side. Bishop e2, and now we see another reason for this uh, um, h5 move, knight h7. So the idea is that black, first of all, black opens up his bishop on uh, this diagonal. Oops, excuse me. He opens up the bishop. Many times black wants to attack white center with the move f7, f5. Okay, so uh, this is still very well known, but this is a kind of a, a latest wrinkle uh, for white. The move bishop f4 attacks this pawn on d6, and it basically commits black to making a decision. Grisha played queen e7, defending uh, the pawn. He could also have considered the move knight e5. White usually plays for queen d2 in these positions. And I think that Grishuk didn't want to block his bishop, which is why he played the move queen e7, queen d2, h4, again, pushing the knight away, and the knight comes back. Well, uh, we can see that White has this very nice control of the center, but black has a lot of dynamic possibilities, including the move g5. He's pushing white's pieces backwards. His knight on f1, uh, the bishop on e2 are a little cramped and passive. Knight e5, okay. So Grishuk has in mind that maybe on a good day he's going to push his h pawn. The pawn on f3 could be potentially weak. But more importantly, black, if, for example, a move like castles, black is interested in potentially attacking white center with f5. Okay. After knight e5, g3. Uh, Levon fights back uh, to try to gain back some of the territory that he's been losing on the king side. If black is so obliging and makes a mistake of castling, look what he's done. He's allowed white to open the G file, and black's <coughs> king is already in some troubles. So after uh, G3, bishop D7 developing, and notice that, uh, oops, sorry, just a second. Yeah, just a second. And yeah, okay. Just wanted to make sure of something. 
Um, exactly at this moment, Black uh, Grishuk had a very um, important choice. I want to put it like that. He could have considered the move G4, pressing his initiative on the king side. In case of F4, to check. Oops, takes, takes. And this would have created a whole new level of chaos. <laughs> uh, Black's idea is that it's not so easy for white to simply win this pawn on f3. Maybe even on a good day, this bishop will come to h3 and maybe end up on g2 protecting the pawn. That's a very unusual uh, situation. Grishuk decided to play bishop d7, takes, takes, rook g1, f5. And you notice that both players' kings are still in the middle. Uh, it was like white didn't want to castle short, then black is kind of keeping his uh, options open. I think that this is a very good lesson for a lot of club players to uh, appreciate that professional players really want to keep as many of their options open as possible. They're not really uh, trying to commit themselves right out of the bat. Okay, so after f7, f5, f4, attacking the knight. Notice also that there's this explosive move, bishop h5, check in the position, which would force black's king to move. Knight g4. Now, in a certain sense, uh, black is very happy. Uh, the position is chaotic, which is what Benoni players are trying to do, is create a lot of complications where it's very easy for both players to find all the mistakes in the position. Also, what black is trying to do is break down white center. If you look at white center, the pawns on d5, e4, f4 really control a lot of space. So black is trying to win the pawns. And one of the things he wants to do is he wants to take this bishop. And this bishop has a beautiful, beautiful view over uh, the long diagonal, e5. Uh, deeply calculated move. Pawn takes e5, d6. Okay, so white has uh, sacrificed a pawn to open up the position. Maybe on a good day he's planning to play knight to b5 to c knight c7 check. Maybe he wants to go knight d5 to c7 in check. And also he could potentially pick up this pawn on c5 with bishop, uh, bishop e3 takes c5. White is also making a home for his own king. Okay. Queen e6, knight b5, threatening to go knight c7 check, forking the king, queen, and rook, what we call a family fork, <laughs> all together now. Okay, rook c8. Black shows his intention of sacrificing an exchange for the knight. Pawn. Maybe this should have been in my first lecture, The Secret Life of a Pawn, <laughs> because look at that pawn. It's, it's just, you know, one square from promotion. Pawn takes. Okay. Again, the position is really uh, messed up. It's complete chaos on the board. If you take, this bishop is under attack. If you move the bishop to take a pawn, well, be careful. Your, 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 queen, your, your bishop and king are pinned, and the promotion square is protected, and 
black is going to win another minor piece. What do you think Levon played? This was deep. Uh, with the bishop? Bishop takes this one. Okay. If the bishop takes on f4, and that's a very logical move. Just a second. I like this turn very much. I think the problem was the bishop comes to the center, attacks the rook. If the rook moves here, I believe the problem was the bishop ends up trapping this rook. So that was one uh, line that uh, Levon did not like. Other guesses? Sorry? Bishop, bishop, where? Th this move? Ah, well then that would just be bishop takes, right? So, so it was like it felt like it was a choice between bishop takes c5 and bishop takes f4. Levon found another choice. Rook d1. What the heck? was that rook d1 well what's going on here you tell me what would have happened if black had captured the bishop what was what was white's intentions to some kind of promote Knight to e? No, 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 no. Levon had this idea in mind. Ooh, bishop b5, and now he gets a queen. Oh, and this was like, this was going to be a very, very difficult for Black's king. Black's king is going to be in real, real danger. Let's go back. So this is White's idea, is to take on d7, to play bishop b5. And there's another idea. In case of taking, oops, excuse me. In yes, that's right. There's another idea. Knight takes. The idea here again is I want to take on d7. And if you take here, just a second. There was this, there was this crazy idea. Takes here. Takes here. Takes here. <laughs> It's like, what the heck is going on? Takes here, bishop b5. And again, another queen is coming on the board. Whoa. So I was having an incredible amount of fun working out all of those ideas where the bishop gets captured and then this queen takes d7 and bishop b5. Sasha played a move. I hadn't expected at all. Knight g5. Whoa. What's the idea behind that? The idea behind that move is if you move your bishop, let's say bishop takes. Oops. Knight f3 check and mate. Whoa. Where did that come from? Okay. So now Levon produced queen, check. Bishop takes, check. King here, check. 
king here. <laughs> I mean, pieces are hanging, kings are flying, king in the middle of the board, rook d6. Okay. Rook d6. Where is the queen going to go? Bishop is hanging. You can't go queen e8 to protect the bishop because then he's got rook down and you lose the queen. So Sasha played queen f7. And now uh, there was an incredible move that Levon didn't play. How many of you want to take a bishop with check? <laughs> Me too. Me too. Like, why? He played queen check here. He didn't take the bishop with check. And everybody wondered, why doesn't he do this? Check. Well, obviously, that's a bishop with check. The king has to move. Now white's queen is hanging. The bishop on e3 is hanging. And um, he has missed a very key point. The key point, if Levon had taken the bishop with check, he would win the game. Ooh, he would win the game. Just simply like that. How? Check. King here. Queen takes c5. Queen takes c5. What Levon had missed was that after takes here, what is white's move? What is white's move? Yes, yes, rook takes g4, and queen takes. Queen f2 check, I just move, and it's black's king that is in real trouble, not white's king. So there was another moment here, too, just a second. Here takes the bishop with a check, king h7 takes the pawn. There was another move. What about knight e4? Mm. What are we going to do about knight e4? Oh, my word. The problem is, if we move our queen, he'll take the rook, which protects the... He'll take the rook with the knight, which protects the queen. And if we take... Well, he can take, and the game is not worse for black. So we need a move here for white that's extra special. We need a really, really good move for white. Extra, extra special. Yes. Yes. We could sacrifice the queen. It's a brilliant um, idea. Rook takes. Now, we can't take the rook because after bishop d3, this knight is pinned. It can't move because of the... And the next turn, white is going to take the knight with check. So we take the queen. And now, check. Ooh. You can't put the bishop in the way because the two rooks 
either rook could capture the bishop. Your king has to go back. And now let's, yes, rook d8 check, bishop f8. Then you, mm. what should white play? Morris, come on. Bishop d4, the rook is hanging. Bishop's, well, he can take that guy too. Exactly, rook takes first, king takes, then bishop takes. Now normally three pieces is good enough. Three minor pieces are good enough to, for the queen. But here you got three minor pieces and a rook and, and two bishops. So white would have been completely winning in this variation. Uh, Lavon had seen this position to knight e4, but he missed this extra special move, rook takes g4, which would have won him the game. So I in <laughs> yeah, it's like something crazy like that, right? So instead, the game goes queen d8 check, which confused everybody because those people had also missed the knight e4 resource. Bishop played queen back, bishop takes, knight back. Now, it's crazy because black's an exchange down, but he's got his king in relative safety. He's got a pawn, and this bishop on g7 is a really good piece. Bishop c4. There was a change. King came up, change, and here. Now, at the time that they had reached this position, a lot of folks still felt that Levon was winning. But I wasn't one of them. I felt that the position was really, really complicated. Uh, Black's knights are crawling around. They have good support squares. Um, the pawn on b2 is hanging. And after this move, knight g5, black is threatening knight f3 check with a fork on the king and the rook. Rook g2, getting out of the fork and also protecting the pawn on b2. Those knights are really hopping around the board. Bishop b8, going after the pawn, getting the bishop out of Black's pieces are taking up fantastic uh, squares in the middle of the board. H3, knight e5, bishop d5. So both players are doing their absolute best to keep their pieces as active as possible. It's funny, this bishop on b8 is actually looking at the a7 pawn, but it's also patrolling the center. Knight d3 check. Now the players had been in time trouble, understandably, king e2, and here I actually think that uh, uh, Grishuk faltered and he should have played, he played in the game knight c1 check and that in my view was a mistake. He should have simply captured this pawn on b2. Give me your pawns, baby. and. Uh, after, for example, bishop takes a7, it was time, oh, sorry, there is knight c3 check that he had to, he first has to take, oops, excuse me, he first have to take, and variation, take, take, take. I had analyzed a variation like this, which is working out in black's favor. Uh, but just to make the time control, knight c1 check. The king came back, knight to d3. So in a sense, no harm, no foul, because there's also, there's not only this pawn hanging, but this pawn on h3 can also be checked and captured. Okay. 
knight to d2, knight back to f6, bishop f3, and wow, after all of this excitement here, the players agree to a draw. And I was like, oh man, you know, they had too, too much excitement for one day, but I thought even here there was a there was a lot of potential. The very annoying thing about this position was I thought that the game was going to continue knight b2 and like this. I, I was so impressed by this game and everything that was going on in this game, I turned on the chess engine and went over the game very carefully. The final position, the chess engine says zero, zero, zero that the game was even. Yeah. I was like, oh man. It's it's, yeah, it's rich, but it's even. Now I'd just like to bring our attention back to what I thought was that a spectacular moment right here when Levon played the move Rook D1. I was like, wow, what kind of crazy move is Rook D1? And the computer thought it was a mistake. Rook D1 was a mistake. The computer thought Levon should castle. What? Still plays Rook D1. He still plays Rook D1, but gets the king out of the pins on the E file. And I thought, okay, well, I got to ask the stupid computer what it intended to do against this. The idea was, remember when the rook went to d1, there was a trick that went queen takes, queen takes, bishop here? Okay. S correct. Now there's bishop takes b2 check. And apparently this makes all the difference in the world. That this bishop takes b2 check, the king goes here, there was something like takes, queen, king up, and black is attacking white's king as well. But the computer says castles was the right move, and then after takes, knight takes e3. Knight takes e3. Now we've got that same variation as before. Just a second, how did that go? Ah, no, I th was it bishop h5 check? Hmm, I'm not sure. Maybe it was here. <laughs> bishop b5. And I think the idea, first of all, I mean, I'm threatening the queen, because now the bishop is pinned, right? And if you take my bishop, I think, or I could also check to h5. That might be the winning line as well. Something like this. If you go king here, check. and mate next turn. Ooh, so here was this incredible, tactical, wild, wild game that was like a roller coaster ride for the players, for the spectators, uh, and the game ends in a draw. And this was the kind of professional game that the candidates tournament was all about. There were so many really high quality decisive games that sometimes you forgot that the, the, draw, the games that were draws were not boring. <laughs> they were a lot, of, a lot of fun. And after watching this game, I guess you guys know how to play like a pro, right? <laughs>